On the first Sunday of April every year, something quite unusual happens in Japan. The normally quiet streets of South Tokyo get stuffed full of people wearing penis hats and thousands of eager dick lovers stand in line to catch a glimpse of huge steel phalluses being paraded through the streets like wonderfully naughty holy relics. Now of course as soon as I heard of this I knew that I had to go down and film. So I grabbed my camera, took a firm hold of my own penis and together the three of us made our way down to Kawasaki in South Tokyo to attend the annual Kanamara Matsuri or penis festival. That's right, there is a penis festival in Japan. Like a complete knobhead, I thought I had my microphone turned on the whole day, but it turns out I didn't at all. So all the footage of me talking like this is completely silent. I was saying some very profound things about penises in public, but I'll have to make do with voiceover instead. So it was a lovely day in Tokyo, beautiful sunshine and cherry blossoms everywhere. Perfect to watch penises be worshipped, which I suppose is true any day, really. And so thought lots of other people too. My goodness, I've never seen so many fans of cock in one place since my last house party, you know. The streets were filled with people showing appreciation of the throbbing hood, the fire hose of fertility, the outgrowth of disappointment. If you don't like crowds, I suggest worshipping your penis in the privacy of your own home instead. Anyway, I stood in the queue to get into the Kanayama shrine where the famous steel phalluses are kept so that you don't have to. The wait was terribly long and thick and throbbing, but was made very enjoyable by watching all of my fellow festival goers, most of whom were sucking dicks, thousands of people just walking the streets blowing pink penises. This was my first ever actual Japanese festival, which is a bit silly having lived here for two years. So, you know, this set the benchmark for sure. If this kind of thing doesn't happen at every festival in the future, I will be terribly disappointed. Not to mention their beautiful themed outfits. Some of them were amazingly ambitious and kept my motivation up, among other things, you know. I was, as you can imagine, of course, incredibly envious, especially of this one, sort of like a dick Viking helmet. I'll have to ask my mum to knit one for me for next year. Finally, I made it into the shrine, which itself was very pretty and nice. The whole shrine was just stuffed full with dick-themed t-shirts, cock candles, dick merch. They even made the sausages dick-shaped, which I think was going a bit too far. You can also get given a penis headpiece by your friend Donovan, who just showed up behind me and just put his Johnson on top of my head. How we usually say hello. Say hi to Donovan in the comments, everyone. And of course I had to buy one of the dicks I'd seen so many people happily guzzling in the streets outside. So here you go. <laughs> After all these years on YouTube, we finally peaked, I feel. The shape was a bit strange, sort of like a double-sided thing. A Swiss army penis, if you will. It tasted really good. This was the first dick I have ever had in my mouth. It did give me a newfound respect for people who usually enjoy a juicy one in their mouth. This one wasn't even big at all, but fuck, it was a bit tricky fitting the whole damn thing in there, you know. Now at this point you might be wondering, what the fuck is this all about? How did this come to be? Why is there a penis festival in Japan? At least I, before I moved here, had the image of Japan as a sort of, you know, not very sexually open society. Well, this shrine used to be popular among prostitutes in the local tea houses, as they were called, who came here to pray for protection against STDs. The thing is though that the gods enshrined here are of metalworking and smithing. But there's a nice story connecting the two. One of a demon who had the hots for a married woman and therefore hid in her vagina, as you do, you know. Now as the husband and the wife did the unthinkable in front of our lord, the demon inside her pussy bit off the guy's penis. Now the weird thing in the story is that it says that the demon did this twice. And I don't really know what that means. Maybe the guy was just, you know, doubly endowed or something. But if that's the case, like, why would you, you know, if I had two and I, I got one bitten off, I would have left at that point, you know, anyway. But still, the poor woman went and had a blacksmith make her a steel dildo, essentially, that she proceeded to shove up her girly, making the demon bite down on it and thusly breaking its teeth, poor thing. It then flew out of her pussy, swearing never to bite cock again. So a happy ending, you know. On this day, in modern times, we all were biting down on penises, and the proceeds of this festival all goes to HIV research, I think. So it's even for a good cause. So of course I had to buy this. Oh my goodness, the white balance. Isn't that nice? And the woman who, who sold them was amazing as well. I really enjoyed being 
in this shrine and doing this whole thing. The atmosphere was lovely, everyone was just filled with joy. Strangers here were all very up for just talking and hanging out with each other, which I find usually is quite rare in Tokyo, especially during the day and when people are not drunk, you know. So if you are in Japan in the first week of April, fuck sakura trees, go to one of the penis festivals instead. Because yeah, there's more than one. I looked to see if there were any vagina festivals as well, and there are apparently, but they're just not as as prominent or well known. I think people need to get on this. There needs to be a petition, I feel. <laughs> but anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching everyone. Thanks to the Patreons as always. There will be many more videos coming, so please do subscribe and share this video, I suppose. I don't say that enough, I feel, with a person who you also think would enjoy penises.